Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Darren Indyke and Richard Kahn are two of the smarmiest, scummiest individuals involved in this whole entire sordid case, in my opinion. Yet somehow, they're still playing a major role. Both of these guys are executors of the estate when they should really be guests of the state instead. From the very beginning, especially Darren Endike, they have been obstinate with the survivors. Getting the compensation fund set up was a struggle, having it administered was a struggle, and still, to this day, Endike and Khan are not doing the right thing. Is it any wonder that they're named in a suit? Is it any wonder that they're being looked at criminally? These two men have zero business being involved in any of this. It's offensive. And I can only imagine if me just being some regular run-of-the-mill average moron citizen is offended, I can only imagine how the survivors feel about it. These two people should have no input or no say-so as to anything moving forward. There has to be some sort of apparatus or some sort of way to have these people removed from their positions as executors. The court needs to step in and they need to be gone. Maybe if they're indicted, they'll have to be removed. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how any of this stuff really works when it comes to Um, executors of an estate or anything like that. This is all new to me as well, and we're all trying to work our way through it, right? But it seems to me that if these two dudes have the cloud of, uh, of responsibility in some regard as to what happened in this case, it would seem to me that these two guys should not be the executors of the estate and that there has to be some sort of way to make sure that they are no longer involved because they have proven themselves time and time again as obstinate, as not wanting to make things move in a, a quick manner. And certainly not helpful. So when it comes to uh, uh, Khan and Indyke, I'm very, very, very clear about how I feel. These dudes have no business being anywhere near this case, never mind as executors. And our article today is going to go into that just a little bit. This is an article from the Miami Herald. And the the headline is, Executors of Jeffrey Epstein Estate Ask Virgin Islands Judge to Seal More Records. The author of the article is Kevin G. Hall. And again, here they are again looking to get more records sealed. They want more secrecy, more privacy. I mean, how much more secrecy do you want here? This stuff, th- this whole entire case has been stuffed down into a hole for the for decades and now all of a sudden it's coming to light and these two idiots are talking about how they want more records sealed i really hope that the judge tells them to beat it i really hope that they don't get their way and honestly it will be a great day when we wake up and we see that both of these idiots have unsealed indictments in the news Executors of the estate of disgraced financier, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein, asked a judge in the U.S. Virgin Islands on Tuesday to place under seal the monthly reports coming from the administrator of a special fund created to compensate Epstein's sexual abuse survivors. So why in the world would they want to have the monthly reports under seal? If they're doing the right thing, and they're treating the survivors correctly, and they're not making any dumbass stupid moves, why in the hell would they want this stuff to stay under seal? It just does not make any sense. Now, if the survivors didn't want numbers getting out as far as how much money they received, I could see that from a privacy standpoint, but the estate has no privacy anymore. They should be laid bare for everybody to see. They have, obviously, 
admitted to wrongdoing by Jeffrey Epstein or they wouldn't be involved in this compensation fund, okay? So, that means I don't want to hear anything about privacy anymore from the estate. It all should be laid bare. In a 24-page filing to Judge Carolyn P. Herman Purcell, the magistrate judge of the Superior Court, the estate did not present a pressing justification for why the report should be kept secret. And I don't really care for Judge Purcell so far, as far as her rulings go. She doesn't really seem to be uh, the type of judge that should be handling a case like this, in my opinion. But who knows, maybe going forward she will prove to be a bit more... <sighs> staunch when it comes to dealing with people like Indyke and Khan, but I'm not going to hold my breath. In order to maintain the confidentiality of the program's administer's monthly reports, as agreed to by the Attorney General and Claimant's Counsel, given the importance of maintaining an effective, confidential, at Claimant's sole discretion, mechanism to provide compensation to those who suffered sexual abuse at Mr. Epstein's hands, the co-executors seek the court's approval to submit the program administrator's monthly reports under seal said the request from Darren K. Indyke and Richard Kahn, respectively the chief lawyer and accountant for the Epstein estate. It is so ridiculous that these guys actually think that people are going to be okay with this. I highly doubt anybody is going to be okay with this information coming out under seal. There has been enough of that here. What are you so scared of? What are you trying to obfuscate? It is time for the curtain to be pulled completely back and for the public to have a whole eyeful of what is occurring. Because some people still don't believe what is going on here. Some people don't believe it until they see it in the New York Times or one of the other propaganda one of the other propaganda machine newspapers. And we're starting to see that. Even the, the people, the symbiotes and the, the people who had their symbiotic relationship with the CIA, such as the New York Times and the Washington Post, they're being forced to cover this story now as well because they want the clicks. But some people, well, they'll, they're never going to believe what happened here because the secrecy of the media. The Epstein Survivors Compensation Fund officially opened its doors on June 25th and its new program administrator, Jordana Jordy Feldman, filed required monthly reports to the court on August 3rd and again last week. So these are the reports that they're, they want sealed, right? Khan and Indyke don't want these reports out for the public to consume for whatever reason. My guess would be is because Khan and Indyke are still up to scumbaggery. There is no indication that Feldman sought to have her reports filed under seal since all parties had already agreed on their confidentiality. In fact, her fund's website notes that her monthly communication to the court will report on an aggregate level only. No individual claimant information will be published or disclosed in a way that compromises claimant confidentiality. Well, that's good. Right. If again, if the claimants, the survivors don't want their information out there, then that's that's up to them. They have been through enough and I think that they have earned the right to some privacy at this point. Now, Indyke and Khan, not so much. All right. It's the state needs to be looking at them. And remember, the state, I know this is going to be mind boggling for some people to understand and hard for some people to let seep in. But remember, the state works for us. OK, so Indyke and Khan should not have any privacy and the estate should not have any privacy. Tuesday's filing by the co-executors does provide some insight into the compensation fund, which was designed to give Epstein survivors a more private forum away from the court battles to seek a measure of financial redress for what happened to them. The filing from Indyke and Khan said 47 individuals have submitted claims to the confidential compensation fund, that eight determinations have been made and individual claimants informed, and that no funds have yet been distributed. The filing also said the deadline for accepting claims is March 25th, 2021. 
So eight determinations have been made out of the 47 claims that have been submitted so far. As to what those numbers are, we have no idea. That has not been released so far. We don't know. Nobody's talked about it. It remains confidential. So what I will say is at least there is some movement here, right? That's a good thing. But again, I will reserve judgment until we see how this claim process all shakes out. I'm not going to sit here and act like, oh, everything's going great. I have no idea, right? All The only information I have is the same information that we're all reading right here. But at least it's not sitting idle. There's been eight determinations. Are those determinations um, correct? Are they going to be accepted? Who knows? We'll have to see. The issue of sealed documents has vastly complicated a number of civil suits involving Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's alleged madam, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, and bipedal serpent. The Miami Herald sued for the release of the documents in a civil suit settled in 2017 between Maxwell and Virginia Roberts, Epstein's longtime accuser who alleges the two trafficked underage girls for sex and abused them. The release of those documents has led to a lengthy legal fight as Maxwell's lawyers attempt to keep secret a deposition from her that they say will pre- prejudice her in her criminal case. She was arrested on July 2nd on charges she aided Epstein's alleged sexual crimes. Now, we know that the lawyers for Ghislaine Maxwell have been going hard in the paint to keep this stuff sealed. They've tried every trick in the book. They've tried to slow things down. They've tried to muddy the waters. And they have also tried to say that, oh, we have confidential information. It has just appeared and, and, and it's going to change everything. And none of it has worked. All the money she has spent on these high-profile lawyers, all the time they have spent wrangling and negotiating behind the scenes, all of the loopholes they've attempted to jump through, have all turned up not off for them. And I really like the way that it's going. It really looks like for the first time that these people are finally on the ropes. That these people are finally on the run. Or, as I like to say, in 2020, the predators most assuredly have become the prey. And we see that as the court keeps handing L's to Ghislaine Maxwell, we see people like Glenn Dubin getting uh, subpoenaed, and we see people like Darren Kahn, uh, Richard Kahn and Darren Indyke under the microscope. Now again, remember, the grand jury is still impaneled. They are still investigating, and I would not be shocked if there are many sealed indictments that have to do with this case. And if Indyke and Khan or one of the other is named in one of those sealed indictments, again, I will not be shocked. They played a critical and crucial role in helping Jeffrey Epstein maintain his criminal sex trafficking international enterprise. Is that clear enough? Indyke and Khan both longtime Epstein associates, are co-executors of Epstein's will, which was changed shortly before he was ruled dead by hanging in a Manhattan jail cell in August of 2019. They face a civil enforcement action by the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Denise George, who alleges they are part of an ongoing criminal enterprise. Lawyers for the, for the Epstein estate had no immediate comment, nor did Feldman's office. Yeah, it's not even they're, it's not even alleging at this point. It's obvious that Khan and Indyke were part of the Epstein operation. They were part of the inner circle, and and Indyke especially has his dirty ass fingerprints all over this case. His signature is everywhere. He helped out the associates. He helped out the core four, and for some reason and somehow. This man is involved as an executor of the estate. I cannot wait for the day that Darren Indyke faces the music. 
you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on that festering, bubbling, oozing cesspool called Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. I will be back later, and I hope all of you have a great afternoon.